Hi, my name is Ronit Mukherjee and I'm an Applications Engineer with Go Engineer. In today's quick tip video, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Chain Component Pattern tool in order to create a chain. And now, a Chain Component Pattern creates a pattern component groups along a sketch or a curved path that simulates a chain. We can add one or more components to this path in order to finish our chain. So, let's see how this works. Uh, in this particular case, in this assembly, I've got two links. This is my link sub 1 links up to and I've also added a path on my on the front plane of this assembly so I've added a simple path and two links now let's see how this chain component pattern works in order to get to the chain component pattern uh, in our linear linear component pattern tool if I hit that pull down menu one of the options down here is the chain component pattern I select uh, that option and uh, it opens a property manager for that particular feature on the left hand side now, starting from the top and uh, going towards the bottom, satisfying everything that uh, this uh, feature is asking us to. So first steps first, it's asking me for what type of pitch method we have. In this case, we've got three different options. The first option is just a distance to a link. And uh, the second option is a distance linkage. And the third option is when we've got connected linkage. Uh, in this case, since, since we have two different links, I'm going to be using that uh, the last option, which is the connected linkage. Uh, this is the type of chain you usually see in your uh, bikes and motorcycles and um, other automobiles. All right, so with that satisfied, uh, the first thing we're asking to is wh what's the chain path? And uh, you, if you notice, I've got a tool for my selection manager over here. So I can select the selection manager tool and it opens up this uh, window um, on the side. And it's basically asking me if it's a closed loop, if it's an open loop, or do I need to make multiple selections for this? So in this case, I'll attempt the closed loop and I'll uh, select the chain path once. As soon as I do that, it highlights all of the chain path and I have to hit the screen check this OK uh, in order for uh, SOLIDWORKS to see this thing as a as their path. So if I select OK to this, down here it shows it as closed loop. Now I know that I need to fill this entire path. I can give it a number of links I want or I can just check this box to fill the path. Once I do that I don't have to fill in this information. Now let's go ahead and look at this uh, chain group one. So for the chain group one I'm going to be selecting this first uh, um, link and uh, as soon as I select that, uh, I notice it. Uh, my cursor jumps on the second box over here, and what it's asking me for uh, in these two uh, next uh, boxes are either a cylindrical face or a circular edge or an axis uh, or a linear edge uh, for us to be able to connect this link to this particular uh, path. Um, one easy way I've uh, I've noticed uh, to do that is by activating my temporary axis. So just by going to the heads up view toolbar, hitting that pull down menu and activating my temporary axes. As soon as I do that, anywhere where you have a radius or a hole or a circle, uh, you'll notice some temporary axes do appear. So in this case, I'll select the first temporary axis over here. You notice that goes in here as axis one. I'll do the same for the second one. It goes there as axis two. And now it's asking me for a placement plane. So with this particular link, we've placed a plane exactly in the middle where it needs to sit on the track. So if I expand that link sub 1, you'll notice there is a plane that I've created and I've left it, left it here called center. So you'll have to have a plane in the center over there. You select that plane and uh, you notice if I zoom out, SOLIDWORKS is able to kind of create a preview of that first link. Um, now I want to be able to have the second link up as a part of this as well. So I'll just activate this chain group 2 and I'll do the same exact process as I did with the link sub 1. So I'll select the link sub 2 and then I'm going to select the uh, temporary axes from the first one and from the second one. And then I have to define what plane is it going to be sitting on. So as soon as I expand link sub 1 and select that center plane for that as well, uh, SOLIDWORKS is able to create a preview with both those links as a part of it. Now the last step is uh, do you want to keep this uh, chain dynamic or static? Dynamic means you'll be able to pick a face and drag the chain and see the motion and static would be uh, you won't be able to do the motion. So in this case I'll just leave it as dynamic uh, just to show you and I'll uh, hit the green check. As soon as I do that, uh, SOLIDWORKS creates this uh, multiple chains for me uh, and I can select any of these faces. So let's say if I select that face and I try to move and I'm able to kind of create that motion of the chain. Okay, right, so I hope you guys enjoyed uh, watching this video. Thank you for watching.